It is my pleasure to be here with you today and with my friend Jackson Davies, the phenomenal stage and screen actor who was born in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. When he left the prairies behind, one of his best known roles was on this coast as RCMP Constable John Constable in CBC's The Beachcombers. That landed him awards and he became an honorary sergeant of the RCMP for real. The Beachcombers turned 40 this year, so Jackson and co. put together Bruno and the Beach, forward by his friend Michael J. Fox. That's an impressive name, along with Jackson Davies, of course. But of course, yeah, and actually one of the reasons he had to change his name to Michael J. Fox was because there was another actor in The Beachcombers whose name was Michael Fox. Well, who knew? Who knew? How did you meet him? Well, Michael, I did a, I did a show with, with Michael called Leo and Me, uh, and uh, I guess it would be in, oh, in the 70s, and uh, I think lately about 74, 75, and uh, then we came, became buddies, and, uh, and uh, he, he's a great kid. Even at that time, you knew he had incredible talent, uh, and you knew it's just a matter of time. Are you still buddies today? Yeah, we email each other back and forth, and uh, usually around hockey riots and something like that. But uh, uh, he's he's in New York, and actually got a new series out. I guess he's just starting a new series. He's playing someone with Parkinson's. Uh, uh, his own his series. His own series. Yeah, yeah. They're just in, in pre-production right now. How great! Yeah. And I saw him on The Good Wife. Yeah, he's great. Whatever he does, he's he's he's, he's so intelligent. He's uh, and he's just he's just and he's and he is what you see. He's a really nice human being. Mm -hmm. Great Canadian kid. Yeah, his mom's still in Burnaby. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, still a hockey fan. Oh, yes. Yes, he is. Hockey player. Yeah. yeah actually, like you. Yeah. I, I still skate with the Canuck alumni. I uh, get, the, get the... I try to stay out of everyone's way, though. That's my problem. <laughs> well, what position do you play? I play right wing. Uh, and and, and on, mostly on the bench. But, but you're not right wing. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. I was a goaltender. I mean, oh, no, I'm not right wing. Right, oh, you mean politically? Yeah. No, I'm more centerized. Yeah. I'm suspecting you're a little <laughs> more liberal than that. Mm -hmm. So, a prairie boy, yeah. central Alberta. Any actors in the family? No, no. My mom uh, and dad were great singers, but, uh, and actually, my mom, who uh, lives uh, in a, uh, I guess, a senior's lodge in, in Wetaskiwin, she still goes out and performs with a singing group. Her, she said the other night, we said, we're going out to entertain the seniors. I said, Mom, you, you, may, you, you are the seniors. But she's, right. so she's a, she was kind mm -hmm. of in her uh, idea of show business, which was wonderful. Pauline. Pauline Davies, yeah. Tilly Davies, we used to call her. Tilly yeah. Davies, yeah. why not? Yeah. Now, uh, this beachcomber yeah. gig you had for some 19 years? I did 16, a little over 16 years. 16. The show went 19, yeah. Uh, originally, uh, when you auditioned, was it an immediate okay? Well, you're you, going to be the cop, or how did it work? It was, you know, I, I had to be a very talented uh, audition. What happened is they asked, uh, could I grow a mustache, and, and, and what size was I? Because they had a uniform that fit. Uh, so I, I said, you know, 42 tall, and they said, welcome to show business. But actually, <laughs> funny, I, I did find a picture of me uh, one of the first days on the set, and I don't think the sleeves actually fit. So I, I, is it, is it actually a picture of me, and it looks like I'm doing the Tyrannosaurus Rex hands. Because <laughs> if I did one of these, I know the sleeves would have come out to there, and I would have been out of, out of a job. <laughs> Do you still have the outfit? No, no, no. I've got a couple name tags, and I did uh, pick up a red surge from the RCMP, which was when they made me the honorary sergeant, so which was kind of nice. And not to mention the height of the great Bruno Gerussi, the star of the Beachcombers, but he was a bit shorter than you. Just a touch. Actually, so was Robert as well, who played, who played Relic. So I, 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 I actually discovered a way to kind of groucho. What I would do is by, you know, l you know, bending my knees and doing a little shift here, I could actually lose about four or five inches height-wise. So if you see the shots of us, we were looking pretty close together. But if, if, if between shots, you know, the, the rest of them were up here. For someone who didn't live here mm -hmm. and never saw the Beachcombers, never heard yeah. about the Beachcombers, what was the story, essentially? Okay, this could be a little scary. Okay, so the story is there's this guy, and uh, he's got a First Nations partner, and they have this boat, and they go around on the ocean picking up logs. Now, I know that doesn't sound all exciting. Gee, that's a thriller. Yeah, that's going to last 19 years. Uh, as I said, when I heard about the, 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 the idea right off the top, I was in this uh, acting group, and we were traveling through northern Alberta, and I heard Bruno being interviewed, and I said to the rest of the guys in the cast, I said, boy, this thing's not going to last a week. Come on, picking up logs. But uh, it seemed to work. Mm-hmm. Well, beautiful setting. You know, I think that, uh, I was actually thinking about that the other day. There probably isn't a, a show that, that shows Canada for the beauty. I guess Arctic Air shows the, the you know, Northwest Territories, but 
uh, again, there's a story where I was talking to someone in, in LA and they were looking at it. It's one of those shots where we're heading out. You can see the water, you can see the islands, and, mm -hmm. and you look up and see the snow-capped mountains. And the guy from the state said, how do you guys do that? And they said, well, that's not a special effect. That's, that's BC. <laughs> right. and, and, that, and that beauty, even to this day, I get emails from all over the world, and, and people always comment about how beautiful B, you know, uh, BC is. They saw it on the show, and that, that cultural tourism thing was uh, it's a very important part of the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's neat hearing all those nice things of about Of course, the and not to mention, but we will, that the star of the show, Bruno Gerussi, yeah was one of Canada's finest actors. He's a Shakespearean actor. He played Romeo at Stratford. He was on the radio. He was pre Zowski. Yeah. Uh, he had the great radio show. World class uh, entertainer and, and actor. I mean, a world class actor. When I got a chance, and you know, I, I knew Bruno all those years. We were very good friends. But after doing research, I, I didn't realize, I mean, I mean, he was, he, he could have gone anywhere. They were after him to go to Broadway. They wanted him to go to Hollywood. They wanted him to go to Broadway. And he'd worked all those stages with all these, these famous name actors, you know, Romeo and Juliet and things. And he was, and I've seen some of the early tapes that uh, in the archives, unfortunately, you can't get at them. But, but I, I saw some of the, uh, the tapes from uh, Stratford and early CBC shows. He was stunning. And, and the shows were stunning. It's, you look and you go, man, it's very kind of classy television then. Mm -hmm. Now, how did Mark Strange, the late Mark yeah. Strange, your friend, and one of the co-creators of the show, Lure Bruno, or who lured Bruno to the Beachcombers? Well, you know, it's uh, Mark Strange co-created a series with uh, L.S. Strange, Lynn Susan Strange, his wife, and, and, and his neat story he tells where he, he was on the beach and they were trying to figure out about the show, what kind of character, and, and they went, Zorba, this guy should be kind of like Zorba, and they both looked at each other and went, Bruno Gerussi. And I think the timing was right for Bruno. He had a young family. He wanted to get out of ra radio, and I think uh, you know the, probably mm -hmm. the money was what was good. And uh, uh, it was a matter of timing. And, sure. And, and and he is Italian, and what? Well, still Italian, even though he's not with yeah. us anymore. Uh, and played the Greek, and I'm sure people stopped him on the street all the time and thought he was a real Greek. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and he had that uh, he had that attitude. He Bruno was bigger than life. I mean, you know, he'd he'd walk down the street and. Uh, he, you know, sure he was he was short, but you couldn't tell. He, he you no. know, yeah, he he, he uh, was a lot taller than uh, his his size. Well, <laughs> and as you say in here, or someone said, yeah. it, it could have been you or Mark. That uh, often you didn't know if Bruno was off stage or on, <laughs> like because he was pretty. He was big, and noisy. Was, yeah. Oh yeah, and he passion. Mm -hmm. He had passion about everything, whether it was you know a. a a parking meter or, or acting or food or whatever he, he had he had passion and what a great way to go through life no kidding yeah. uh, and uh, some of the cameos on that show can I call them cameos you had uh, guest yeah uh, guests come on and be part of the beachcombers yeah. and one was uh, Umberto Mengi yeah. yeah the restaurateur who was a great friend of Bruno Gerussi at the time and he was a Ferrari salesman <laughs> yeah. on the Beachcombers. Yeah, a used Ferrari salesman. I, I think Bruno wanted to drive a Ferrari, and, and Berto actually had a Ferrari, so he used his Ferrari. Right. And uh, and it was it was a it was a kind of a fun episode, anyways. And, I'm and sure. that, another one, we actually brought him back to to play uh, to play himself, and, and someone buying some C product around Gibson's. But uh, yeah, it was fun to do that, where you'd you'd bring in your friends to the show. No kidding. Yeah. Did you have to like know someone to? to get that gig? Well, I think it helped if you knew Bruno. <laughs> probably. It probably did. So let's go back to you, your yeah. beginnings uh, on the Beachcombers. So the first line, as I said earlier, insignificant, pretty much. Yeah, I, I think what it, they needed someone to fit in that uniform and, and drive the police car out of the shot in the end. And, uh, and they, they, there's a certain thing, you don't want to give too many lines, you have to pay you a bit more money. So uh, That's right. they, they so count each uh, line you have, and I, they made sure I didn't go over or ad lib and things like that. And, before you become a principal actor? Yeah, you're just an actor, and it's all, it's all uh, at that time it was just the, the number of lines. So you actually, you couldn't ad lib or you'd change, you know, a there to a, or, or a, here we are, or whatever. You had to be careful there right. wasn't a certain amount of line because they'd have to pay you more and you'd get more residuals. I mean, you'd get checks for maybe $7 instead of $4. <laughs> All right. And there is someone uh, called Continuity yeah. who's counting. Well, I'm sure they didn't want to get in trouble. Uh, they have to make sure that we stick to the script uh, mm -hmm. uh, as well. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was a kind of a simpler time in the industry at that time, and they just wanted to make sure that they kept control of everything. When you reflect on, uh, all those episodes. Is there one you loved? One you, one that sticks out in your mind? Two, three? Uh, 
well, you shows know, you really liked, didn't like? There, there was there was many, you know. There was a couple that I that that, that, that weren't all that fun, but uh, you know, some were work. But you know, most of them they, they were great. You got a chance uh, right when we started. I got, had they had a chance. Mark was and, and Lynn Susan were writing some really funny, bizarre shows for me where I could I could be you know I could be not just the normal cop. At first, I was supposed to be the straight cop, and then after a while, I was able to kind of ease into this kind of kind of character, kind of a bumbling character, and then I kind of moved him up to just like just one of the a person you'd meet in a small town and right and I'd get a lot of response from the RCMP members that would say that they, they kind of like my portrayal of just just a friend just a neighbor who happened to be a police officer okay and yeah. you never got to be the gay cop <laughs> because <laughs> no that, that would have been politically incorrect in the well, day I mean, almost it, it may have been at that time mm -hmm. I would I, I, I would think there's probably a lot of things that are, I mean politically correct I mean at that time we, we used to use I remember right off the first show Bruno says to Pat John who played Jesse the First Nation actor he went you know spit in his hand and went deal Indian and deal the Greek so at the, now I kind of cringe at it uh, but at the time you know at uh, right. you know, early 70s and so. it moves some boundaries for Aboriginal actors well yeah I, I'm really really proud of what Phil Keatley did and, and, mm. and developing Phil uh, Keatley uh, being he's the one of the producers producer. and he was really make, made sure the original producer that made sure that First Nations were an important part of this and, and I, I certainly learned more about First Nations uh, uh, situations from that show and of course I grew up with tax with tax were next to a First Nations Reserve, but I learned more about First Nations on that show mm -hmm. than I did from, from being in, you know, back at home. Tell me about the woman who played Molly. Oh yeah, Ray Brown. Ray Brown was a, was a neat lady. She uh, again came from a theatrical background, which all the actors at that right. time, there wasn't a lot of television. You know, we talk about a billion dollar industry. Uh, that, when I started Beachcombers, you know, there was probably just a couple TV shows and, and maybe one movie a year. So uh, Ray, uh, Came from a stage background, and uh, and she was, you know, she was a good sport. You know, made her climb out on the, you know, on the boat and go over the logs and things like that. But a tough part, you know. Bruno and her probably had the toughest part. They were, you know, they had to drive the plot around and uh, and had to be the, the, you know, lead the lead characters and say, you know, and poor, Mo you know, Ray would have to be stuck in Molly's Reach cooking all the time. Oh my God, one more show mm -hmm. of cooking. Uh, but she was certainly fun to work with. And and she played the grandmother <laughs> in the end. But in the very beginning. Well, the first concept of this show, wasn't she going to be a single woman? Yeah, excuse me. <clears throat> Mark uh, wanted to have a, a single woman, uh, and then that way there'd be a little bit of love interest between Teen Bruno and, uh, and uh, rather, Nick and, and Molly. But uh, CBC at the time thought that that was totally risque, and the <laughs> idea that there'd be a single mother and someone, you know, uh, you know they didn't want right. to go that way. No uh, hanky-panky on the beach. No, there wasn't much hanky-panky on that show. Yeah, after those 19 years, a couple of hankies, but no pankies. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. There was a lot of hanky-panky behind the scenes. You know, I heard that. I... I, I, I did too. <laughs> I heard that uh, occasionally you and Bruno would moon the crew. No, is that, that a rumor? That was just a, a rumor. We, I'm sure we don't have that on tape, but uh, uh, we'd. Uh, there was the occasional. If you do, we can't yeah, show yeah, it. That's true. Yeah, without those that mosaic kind of look. Mm. But, you know, it, it it was a it was probably the best job. It was the best job I had in television. And you had a sense of family. You would go up to Gibson's, and you know, everyone would live there for the four or five months we filmed, and you know, we'd be out on the boat. And at lunchtime, there would maybe a little bit of water skiing, and there was one occasion of. Uh, you know, a nude water skiing going by, but it's, uh, <laughs> which, goodness, we don't have pictures of that. But it, you know what? Great, great group of people. But I thought <laughs> Bruno wasn't a swimmer. <laughs> Bruno couldn't swim a lick. A lick. And, and it was a neat part is that he accepted that and we put that in the character. But uh, there's a story where they, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a story where we, uh, they put some, uh, a, 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 a wetsuit on him. And they unfortunately just put the bottoms on, and wetsuits are rather buoyant. So they were going to, he was supposed to jump in and whatever, but what happened is because the wetsuit, it actually turned him upside down. So he jumped in the water and his feet kind of went up in the air like that, and they had to pull him out by his feet. And it's coughing, and, uh, and they made it do and take again. I'm but, sure. Yeah. Call wardrobe. Paul, call wardrobe. We've got yeah. to figure this out. So they put the yeah. wetsuit on yeah. the top after that yeah. underneath yeah. the outfit, yeah. and so it all worked he, out. So at least in the right way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be back with one of Canada's favorite actors who played the tall, earnest, and mustachioed constable constable on the Beachcombers, Jackson Davies.